So today we're going to take a look at the Intex Explorer K2 inflatable kayak. We believe it's one of the best buys you can get for £100. Yep, we've owned this boat for a little over a year now and we thought we'd just share a few of our thoughts on it. So straight out of the box you get the carry bag with the kayak and two inflatable seats, a pump with hose, instructions and repair kit and two sets of paddles there is just one set there but we'll get on to the reason for that in a moment so out of the bag you'll see we've got the kayak there two seats and a skeg so if we come to the front of the boat which is the yellow end you find you have a floor valve and the Boston valve either side on the side chambers. Now firstly I wish they'd put a Boston valve on the floor because once that's pumped up you have to get the valve in quite quick. Although it's got a one-way valve in there it doesn't seal perfectly so when you take the pump out you have to get that in pretty quick because the uh, yeah, air does start escaping from that. Further on from that you have a small inflatable chamber at the front and then again at the back. Now you'll notice either end has a grab handle which is ideal for tying a rope. It also has rope around the front and the back so if you do happen to fall out and you need something to grab hold of then uh, it's there. So now the boat's inflated, um, just want to talk about a couple of points. Now in the instructions and when you get the boat you'll you'll notice a gauge here. Now the instructions say you should blow it up till these line up. Well you'll notice the boat measurement is actually longer. It's actually longer when the boat is deflated so I don't know what Intex were thinking. You can't inflate the boat and get them to line up even when it was brand new, if you lined it up and it was just too squishy. So what I suggest people do is get a pump with a pressure gauge and do it to one psi, just under if it's a real hot day. And the uh, the boat has been absolutely fine at that pressure. It's um, a really hot day today so I've just done it under but it should feel firm but not bulging. A lot of people slate the pump that comes with it to be honest we've not used it much because we have that one so we've not tended to to use that I mean if we're at home we use an electric pump because it's a hot day you know and but um, yeah that's the the boat kayak whatever you want to call it now if we flip it over You'll notice there's a socket at the bottom for the skeg. Now that clips into the bottom so it's locked in. The good thing about this is you can take it in and out when the boat's inflated. I know a lot of the Sevelors you can't and you have to deflate it. But it's all well and good until you get out and you want to put the boat down and you've got gear inside. You want to, you want to easily be able to remove one of those which is a bit awkward one-handed. <laughs> there we go. So that, for those of you who don't know, keeps you going in a straight line. Stops the boat from uh, weaving about so much. So that's the bottom I-beam construction. The material is made from a reinforced vinyl. As far as vinyl boats go, it is pretty thick and it's pretty tough to be fair. We've not had any issues with it. So when it's fully inflated it's 312 centimetres long and 91 centimetres in width. So the seats are fully adjustable, they sit on there you see on there, velcro pads so you can move them both back and forth. And then you've got adjustable back straps, the seats do unclip easy. So it's perfectly feasible to make it into a one-person kayak especially uh, useful if you want to put some camping gear in the back or the front so 
So the kayak has a capacity of 180 kilograms, 400 pounds. That is 28 stone in old money. So not too bad really, especially if there's one person plus camping gear in there. It uh, certainly can take the weight. Now at the rear, you have a drain plug in there. So if you're doing a bit of white water, which I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube, people give me some right hammer. It's easy to uh, drain the water out from, from inside. That's just accessible through the back. If you stick your hand down there, it's a bit hard to show on video, but you can, you can see it there. You just pull it open and it'll drain out. Right, so as mentioned earlier, the paddles, standard paddles are 218 centimetres long. That is not long enough for this boat. You get wet. So each time you take a stroke on the other side, this side drips all over your laps. Even with the drip rings, it is just far too short. So what we've done is extended them. I'm just showing this for video purposes. There's one extended there against the other one. This is 250 centimetres long now, which is a lot better. I mean, you stay a lot drier. Yeah. They should be longer as standard. There's no two ways about it. What we've done is scrapped that middle plastic section. We've used a wooden pole. So where the metal ends there, the, metal, the wooden pole goes to about there, about 10 or 12 inches inside the aluminium and then it's just gaffer taped. So that middle section is a wooden, it's actually a windbreak pole, but a broom pole or anything that will fit inside the aluminium shaft will do. So the wooden pole runs and then all the way to there. So it's probably actually stronger than the plastic joiner, but gaffer tape just to keep any water out. Um, you've got rubber hand grips there and then like I say drip rings there. 250 centimetres it is a lot better length. So if you do buy one, that would be the first thing I suggest doing, is extending those. Cheap and easy mod to do, but just makes your day out a lot more enjoyable. Going back to the valves, the valves are recessed, so you're not catching your legs on those. The um, floor valve, when inflated, is tucked under there, so that can't accidentally pop out. You can't catch that. All these valves press inside so the flush. So on the water it paddles remarkably well given its price point. We've had some great days out of it. It's actually our teenage daughter's kayak and they've been on the Norfolk Broads, they've been all over, no issues whatsoever. I mean obviously it is inflatable so you have to take certain precautions, not, not go over thorns and drag it through brambles and things but it it does actually go through the water really well. If one of you is in there, I would put the seat more in the middle or put some kit up the front because you tend to pull a bit of a wheelie if you sat right at the back on your own. But uh, yeah, as far as going through the water, it, it paddles really, really nicely. And like I say, it's reinforced vinyl, but for what it is, it is pretty tough. Like I say, we've had no issues with punches or seams or anything like that. So when it's all packed away it all goes into a nice neat carry bag which weighs 16 kilograms. So that's the Intex Explorer K2 kayak. We really recommend it, it's a good low price budget kind of thing to get you out on the water, it's a lovely all-in-one kit for a starter kit. Yeah in all honesty I don't think you can do any better than £100 boat, seats, two sets of paddles, pump, repair kit. I mean, we put our own children in this. We wouldn't risk their lives or enjoyment if we didn't have complete trust in it. Um, obviously it has limitations being inflatable. You can't run it over sharp metal, for example. <laughs> but they do seem really durable. We've seen lots of videos on YouTube of people white water rafting in them and, and everything. So we're um, perfectly capable. For the price, absolutely fantastic. So, hope you found that useful and thanks for watching.